I usually have a hat, but uh, this time I didn't wear it. I uh, kind of lost it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hopefully next time. So I'll be talking about Cowboy, which is a uh, quite popular uh, Erlang HTTP server. It does not only HTTP, but also REST and uh, WebSockets. And uh, we will focus this time on WebSockets. So I want to explain how you can easily build a web chat application in your own using Cowboy in really a few steps. So let's start. First, we have Cowboy. Cowboy is quite new. It's maybe two years old now. Uh, it's received a lot of development. Uh, including in recent months, it's still a work in progress, but it should be almost ready. In the WebSocket side, it's uh, fully WebSocket standard <coughs> variant. Uh, WebSocket is now a standard. It has a, an RFC, we will see it afterwards. And Cowboy has been tested with 1 million uh, concurrent connections on a single Amazon EC2 instance. So that's pretty good, I think. Uh, it, one million takes about uh, 25 gigabytes of memory. So that's, yeah, I think it's pretty good. You can really scale your application if you need it. And Cowboy, of course, is getting refined. And we now have, we now have a user guide that is mostly for our own developer. So I'm not sure how many people here are doing a long already, no a long. Yeah, not, not many people. Okay, so that's good. Uh, hopefully, I hope to write a book which will be able to uh, introduce people to both Cowboy and Arlong at the same time without going too much into details uh, about uh, Arlong itself since there's already many books. But I see that people who do uh, web stuff and uh, come to our own try directly to use the voice, so hopefully <coughs> this should be a good documentation. So WebSocket is a standard. Uh, it's mostly uh, it's using the HTTP upgrade uh, to initiate a uh, two-way connection between the browser and the server. So it's mostly a TCP connection, except it has framing because there are a few types of data packets you can send, and especially two which are text, which is uh, unique text. It has to be uh, properly UTF-8, UTF sorry, and uh, binary, which is uh, anything really. Uh, and the WebSocket is supported by now all the major browsers, so it's a technology that can be used and we will see, we will talk afterwards about solutions for other browsers which don't have the support. <coughs> so what is a web chat? A web chat is mostly a few users which connect to a server. Uh, the server has one or more rooms, and you can have one user in one room, <coughs> and many rooms, and so on. So it's mostly something that broadcasts messages to users based on the room they are in. So it's not, it's not complicated. So let's write a web chat. OK. Can you see? Oh, yeah. OK. So I'll be starting with the recovery web socket example, which is uh, just a few files. Here we have a OTP application. I won't go into the details. I think uh, Eric uh, talked about it this morning. So when we start the application, we uh, create what is called a dispatch list. It's pretty much uh, the list of paths that will be matched against. And when a patch match, 
uh, you get a handler, and then this handler is executed. We get the lights a little bit. So here we simply have uh, three three paths. We have the first one, which is uh, the slash pass, which is uh, simply our uh, main HTML file. We have the WebSocket pass, which will be our WebSocket handler, the one we are going to uh, modify. And we have one where we store uh, JavaScript files here in uh, jQuery because <coughs> it simply makes it much easier to do uh, WebSocket. And we start cowboy. We start to cowboy uh, listener with uh, these rules, this dispatch list, and this produces uh, the following results. I can connect. There's a few messages sent. I can send messages myself. Okay, and I receive them. So not, <coughs> not a lot of things. So you can see the code here. Uh, this is all the code that's needed to do uh, this. We have first we start a timer that we one second after connection, uh, send the message to the socket, and then we have here this uh, the timeout for the timer. So we start another timer to send another message, and so on. And each time we reply the previous message we wanted to send. And when we receive here a message from the web socket we uh, send it back. So there's one thing uh, important to notice here. We have one function WebSocket handle which will receive the messages from the socket. And one function WebSocket info which will receive, it, receive the messages from Parang itself. So as some of you can guess, I'm sure uh, this is mostly a gateway to your Parang application. When we receive a message from the socket, we do something on uh, the wrong side and possibly come up with a response. And when we receive uh, a message from around, we will uh, possibly send something to the socket and so on. So this one here isn't a web chat. We only have one user at a time. We don't have a concept of rooms yet. So we are going to do that. First, let's, let's remove everything about, about the timers. Let's go to a clean state. Okay. So this is simply echoing back anything we send. We can test it. Oh, yeah, I need to start. So if I send something, it's echoed back. OK. So now, when we receive this message, we want to uh, broadcast it to any other people in the room. We are going to do a single room for everyone. There's no need to get too complicated here. So we don't need actually to have uh, a process or anything to contain the, the room messages. We can simply, uh, when we connect, register the processes uh, under a, a single name, for example, my room. And every time we receive a message, we simply forward it to all the processes of the connections that are in the my room uh, registry. So we have something that is called jQuery for this. So when we initialize the WebSocket connection, we simply register this process under the name um, my room. So here, 
P L are simply simply mean property that is a uh, list of processes that will uh, be available under this name, and L is for local. We can have also a global uh, registry for distributed applications. And so, when we receive uh, a message from the web socket, we simply tell the GPROC my room that we to send it to uh, all the process register. Uh, okay, and we here we want to reply. There's no need because we will also receive this message since we are registered to this room. And when we receive this message. Uh, so we will receive it here. We can reply it directly. And that's it. We have a web chat. Let's talk. Oh. <coughs> oh, yes. I need something. I forgot. I also need to start the GIF for first. I send a message, I still receive it. But then if I connect elsewhere and I send a message, everything receives, receives it. Okay? Did everyone understand how it works? We simply have a, a registry of processes in the room. So here we have our two connections. And every time we receive a message, we send it uh, to all the processes in the registry, which then send it to the uh, client side using WebSocket reply here. OK? So let's go. Oh. Yeah, high five. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so let's go into more details about uh, different kind of web chats. We have covered the most basic usage, which is one single room. We can have as many people in it as we want. And that doesn't do much. We don't have sessions, for example. Uh, sessions will, would allow us to, uh, when we have a disconnection, because the Wi-Fi uh, went down or something, we will reconnect. We want to have our, our messages uh, still there. We don't want to uh, lose everything while we were, were here. So a session would be simply an long process which buffers the messages. And this is this process that would receive, uh, that would uh, connect, uh, register, uh, register to the room and we see the messages sent to the room. And then when the WebSocket connection uh, arrives, it tells this process, hey, I'm here. Uh, please send me everything you have. And that's all of it. And of course, if you have a session process, you can also uh, manage uh, the state of uh, the connection. For example, if the user didn't do anything in the past, uh, five minutes, it can be uh, put away or disconnected. So, but this isn't all because when you when you send a message, you can't always know whether this message got uh, to the client. Uh, the client could reply, but replying means you double the number of messages sent to WebSocket. And that's not very efficient. So instead, you simply uh, tag all the messages you send to WebSocket with a number. And this number gets auto-incremented. 
So when the disconnection happens, the client reconnects simply uh, pass this number uh, on reconnecting, and the server knows at which point it stopped receiving messages and sends every sentence. And we avoid uh, checking that it received, since uh, now the state, this state, this part of the state is stored in the client. It's the client that knows about this. <coughs> and of course, once you send all the messages that it missed, you can just uh, continue as before. And that's it. So thank you. Uh, I hope you have uh, many questions. Uh, you can help, uh, find the cowboy on this link. Uh, there's an ERC channel if you want. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Any question? Yeah? So theoretically, like how many messages can you process at max? Um, when we tested it with one million, with one million connections, it was uh, about a message per second. So that's a million messages per second. But uh, we didn't reach the limit. We just uh, tried on this. It's not a small, but uh, uh, it, it was a, it was one of the smallest uh, EC2 instances. We just wanted memory. And uh, actually, you can process really a lot of things uh, in our some store. <coughs> but uh, what will be uh, the problem is mostly I.O. Uh, you reach uh, the limits there long before our uh, starts uh, consuming too much CPUs. Or also the memory. Uh, if you are doing a lot of things, you will tend to have many things in memory, and that's also a problem. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah? You mentioned an auto-incremented ID, which yeah. is easy to do if you only have one instance of your server. What if you have, could you have, could you scale this well, out? Yeah. The way you do this in a distributed environment is that uh, the session process uh, when you start the session process, you start it uh, on the same node as uh, the WebSocket connection. But when the WebSocket reconnects, it might be on a different server. And so you still continue to talk uh, thanks to the distribution to the uh, session on the first server. And this process uh, never stops. And this is the process that contains both the buffer and the uh, IDs for its messages. Any other question? Thank you.